Hello world, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how you can perform SQL queries through Entity Framework. Normally Entity Framework is used as a model for the various entities in your database, but you can still use .NET to do raw SQL queries with commands and parameters via the Entity Framework. But before we get into that, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. It really does help me to bring you more great .NET content. So let's get into SQL queries in Entity Framework. Entity Framework is an ORM. It's a framework for object relational mapping. So we can use classes to represent the tables in our database. And I've done several other videos on Entity Framework, which you're obviously very welcome to go and view. But this video is more specifically about using that in a different way, using it to send conventional SQL to our database. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use a Blazor application because I seem to be a Blazor guy at the moment, so I'm going to stay on brand. And you may remember from a previous video with Entity Framework and Blazor, I used the AdventureWorks database, and in that I pulled a list of products from that database through Entity Framework and onto the front end of the application. So here you can see the application, and if I click fetch data, it goes to the database and gets all the products that we want. Those products being items in this database. So you can see here I've pulled from my product table in the sales LT uh, database, which is that AdventureWorks database that I pulled a template from Microsoft. And I want to say as well, I'm not actually sponsored by JetBrains, but I've been using their data grip tool in place of SQL Management Studio to try it out. And actually, it's a really great experience. I'm really loving it. The, my favorite feature, just want to say, is this here where I can essentially just say, repeat this query every second and it'll just keep refreshing. At work, that is huge because data in SQL is refreshed pretty quickly. And so I'm able to see a virtually real time view using this feature. So back to the original code that rendered that data through Entity Framework, uh, we can see we're on the fetch data page. I'll just zoom this in. Uh, on the left hand side, we're on fetchdata.razor. And we're using the oninitialized async event to populate our products. So you can see here, we've got a private list of product. Not sure why that's there commented out. I'm sure it was there for a good reason, obviously. But you can see as we start, we've got this blank list of products. And then when we start up the page or when it's uh, initialized, it will go to our context, go to our products, and just give me everything to a list. And obviously you saw before that we could, instead of just saying, get me everything, you could say context.products.where, and then put in your Lambda saying where product number is whatever, you know, so we can use link queries with our entity framework context. So I want to present to you a alternative to this where you could potentially just say, okay, I still want to use my context, but I actually want to send raw SQL down the pipe. So let's start off with a really basic version of this. I'm going to basically do the alternative or the equivalent of this line of code here in normal SQL. So I'm going to say that products is equal to, we're still using context and we're still going to products. So we can still target the table that we want to or using the DB set that is specified in entity framework in this application. But then instead of just saying to list, we can say dot from SQL. So this should be available if you're using the Microsoft Entity Framework Core uh, namespace in this page. And you can essentially say um, what your query is in this parameter. Now you can't just chuck a string into there. Um, the from SQL is expecting that you put a formatable string. What's a formatable string? Well, it's a string which can handle string interpolation. Again, another video that I created on string interpolation, check that out. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna put a dollar sign here. That's a pound sign. I might be biased towards my own country. I'm sorry, America. But then I can say select start from sales LT t.product because that's the name of the table. But now we've got an error on that line because actually this on its own is just going to return an I queryable. An I queryable doesn't actually iterate over any results and return them. It is just a blueprint for a query that Link is going to use to get the data. It's not actually executed. 
Once you actually enumerate an item in link, that's when it executes. So here I'm going to say to list. And now you'll see if I hover over products, it is expecting a list of products to come back. And this should give me the exact same result as the line above. The only difference is I'm being explicit about the means of getting the data from the database. It's still expecting products, and if I wrote a query here that didn't return a list of products, I think I'd have a problem. But I'll breakpoint this, I'll start the application, and we'll see what we get back. So the application's fired up. If I go to fetch data, it comes into this line here, go over it, and there we go. You can see it took a little bit of time because it was actually fetching the data. And then there you go. We've got the products returned in exactly the same way. It's a list of product, and I did it using normal SQL queries. And from SQL as well will allow you to use not just normal SQL queries, but also uh, stored procedures. So I don't have any stored procedures on that application or on that database, but I could just say from SQL and then execute name of stored procedure. Now, what if we want to pass in parameters? This is going to be a very common use case. And of course, I'm looking at this in a security context. I'm looking at this with a security lens. Now, according to Microsoft, dot from SQL and dot from SQL interpolated are methods which are safe against SQL injection. Now, I don't know whether that's guaranteed, uh, but you can, if you want to, use the string interpolation to pass in various different values into your query to build it on the fly. However, I would still recommend using parameters, which is what I'm going to do shortly. There's another function called from SQL raw, which you definitely do need to use parameters for because it's not guaranteed to be safe against SQL injection. So still using from SQL, if I wanted to interpolate a part of this query, for example, say I wanted to get a product which has a specific product number. So for example, if I look at the data in here, I've got a bunch of items with specific product numbers. So I'm just going to pick one out of the list. I'll go for this one here. It's your lucky day, FRR38R60. And up here, I'm going to say uh, we're going to create a variable called product number, and it's just equal to that. So if we wanted to, we could then add to our query and say where product number equals and then we can use the interpolation to pass in product number. So if I go back to the fetch data page, then it comes back onto this line, hover over that, and I get one result back. So that's worked. And according to Microsoft, that is safe against injection. I don't know how I feel about it. I think I'm just a little bit cagey when it comes to uh, dynamically building SQL queries. So I think I'd still want to use a parameter in this case. So to do this, I'm going to use from SQL raw, which is essentially what you would use if you want to dynamically build your SQL query. And I'm going to take it one step further. I'm actually going to pass in a interpolated string for the column name as well as the parameter value of product number. So I'm going to set a new variable called column name. I'm going to set that to product number. So that bit will be string interpolation, as you can see in this line here. But then also I need to create a SQL parameter for the value of product number in my where clause. And we do that in exactly the same way we would do if we were using SQL parameters in a SQL command in C Sharp. So I'll create another variable called my parameter. And this is going to be a new SQL parameter. And I'm going to call it product number. I'm going to use camel case for this one. But this would be the equivalent of saying in SQL, I have a parameter that is at product number. And the value of that is the product number value from that variable. So then we can change up our from SQL command, and we can make that from SQL raw, and then alter the actual query that we're putting in. So we can say where product number, well, that's going to be the column name. So that's still fine. But then we're not going to use the string interpolation for this uh, value in the where clause. We're actually going to just use parameter. So I'll put at then my parameter. And then we need to pass in another argument to from SQL raw to specify the parameter that's going to be substituted in for at my parameter. So I'll put a comma, put my parameter. And we still use to list because that's what we're expecting to populate into. We're still targeting products. We've got from SQL raw. We put in the string, interpolated string, so a formatted string for the query. We've used interpolation on a part of the query that's on the column name. And then we've said that the where clause is where that column name is equal to this parameter. And then we've passed that parameter in after the fact, returning a list. So now it's running. I'll just go over to fetch data again, step over it, and we should just get one result back. And you can see there that actually failed because 
I made a boo-boo. I actually got my variable name confused with my parameter name. So I passed in um, my parameter as the parameter name, which is not correct. That's just the variable name for the parameter. So it's actually at product number. Silly boy. Change that over, save it and run it again. This time you can see we have one result back, which is what we're expecting. If I let it proceed and look at the page, so you can see we've got just that one row queried from the database. Now there is another way that we can do this that I wanted to demonstrate to you before we wrap up. And that is actually using a combination of raw SQL and link query. So I'm gonna go back to using from SQL. And what we can do here is if I go back to just getting all the products. So, so select start from product sales t dot product obviously we don't want all the products and so to use a link query here we can use that link query in place of a where clause in the sql so we can say dot where and then use a lambda function so i can pass in x being the the product and then x dot product number is equal to product number and then Put that on a new line just to make it look a bit nicer and then dot to list and again that should give us the same result so i'll run it fetch data that's break pointed step over it and that failed because of a typo not on form today when it comes to typos I'll try again head over it you see we again have one item back so it did look a little bit slower there and so i don't know specifically what the performance differences with each of these methods, but I imagine there's probably bottlenecks in, in some methods where there's less of a bottleneck in others. Uh, and just to show you as well, we've got the same result here on the front end. And we could also change this up again. You know, we could try and get multiple values back in that list. We could say x.color uh, is equal to red. And you can see there we've got all the red items. So, you know, you can, if you want to, change the way you query against the database, still using Entity Framework, but being a little bit more explicit about the SQL that's being passed through. In terms of use cases, I guess it really is up to you at this point. It's For me, this is more of a convenience feature. It gives you more flexibility. Some people are not as comfortable with Lambda and link queries or the basic link queries um, with the from and where and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so, you know, this might be a, an effective alternative. If you've got something which is already scaffolding a database, you've got a context already and you can just go dot products, but then you want to be really specific about the SQL query itself, this could be a good option. I hope this was useful. Once again, I really enjoy bringing you content and it's way easier for me if you guys are subscribed. So hit that subscribe button, like the video and spread the word. And I will see you next time for some more great .NET content.